how to create and run your own podcast, we'll, we'll break it into these four key areas. So I'll start off with your setup uh, for those that haven't um, created your podcast yet, um, all the things that you need to launch one and get one started, how to find your guests, which obviously is really important. Um, so how you have built a bit of a um, template to reach out to guests and, and a framework, um, but also recording maybe guests that uh, commonly will ask or oh, now's not a good time, but keen to do it in a couple of months time. So a spreadsheet that you can um, note those things down and take notes um, to refer to, creating your own run sheet. And I'll um, share all of my templates uh, for you to access. So you'll be able to reference mine and by all means, feel free to copy and, um, and take out what you feel like you need. And then um, building an engaged listener base at the end. So to start with the setup process, um, which probably by now for Academy members will be no surprise that I do use virtual assistants um, to assist me in managing the operations of the business. And um, one of the first tasks that I had with um, bringing virtual assistants into Prepare Like a Pro was with the podcast. So still to this day, I've, I've never edited my, a podcast episode, nor have I published one. So that's something that one of my virtual assistants manages. And she has since day one to the to the point where it's something that she's done for numerous other businesses. So she was able to find a, a set up the host provider and make a recommendation one that she's worked with in the past. And it, it's something that's been a really seamless process to the point where I literally do find the guests, interview them, and that's it. Once the recording's done, um, my virtual assistant will publish it, and um, we've got a uh, routine schedule set in place the where. Um, using a spreadsheet, Google Sheets, um, she'll know who I'm interviewing uh, for the upcoming month. We'll go into firstly, how to set up your first 10 episodes. Uh, to, so they're the, they're the key just to get yourself um, set up and, and on the map. Um, make sure that those first 10 are deliberate. There's a purpose behind them. You're not, you know, they're consistent with the type of guests that you're asking. They're not um, random. Um, that probably sounds like an obvious one, but I think that's something that people can do from the start. They aren't clear on who their listener is and really think about who who's going to listen to your podcast what listeners are you wanting to attract for the show but what is the listener going to want to um what's going to engage them so for for prepare like a pro our listener base is predominantly uh, high performance staff or high performance athletes so that's what when i'm thinking of who to have on the show i'm thinking of those two populations so to start with for me i very much focused around colleagues at the Hawthorne Football Club, um, which was a luxury because there was a range of really high um, quality um, people and, and people with great experiences and great stories. So that was a great place to start. So in terms of templates, um, I'll add these as attachments. So we've got how to engage um, new people on the show. So I've got a, a template that you can follow on, uh, especially for cold leads, those you've got no connection with, you can follow that template. Uh, a run sheet, obviously really important for you to refer to. Uh, I do all my interviews, apart from the Sam Nima one, all of them being over the computer. So you can have the luxury of having the, the run sheet right there um, without anyone seeing it on your computer while you're doing the interview. And then, uh, and I'll share that as well on a PDF document, the questions that I base mine on. And, and, and I'll go into, I'll show you this on the workshop as well. Um, the sort of how I've laid it into three different phases to keep the, uh, interview engaging and then what we do once I publish so I'll share these templates you'll be able to attach them within the academy be seen so oh, there's no point having a podcast unless you've got listeners so uh, some in areas that I've found to boost the engagement and um, it's something that I've only learned through trial and error and speaking to other hosts but uh, September was our biggest month um, you know, by a long way. So at this point, we've had the podcast for nearly a year and we've had 100,000 listeners. And September, we had 25, over 25,000 listeners. So it's, it's something that I've, there's a couple of things that have been really helpful um, that I'm sharing here, helpful tips and things that I've learned from other hosts um, that I've started implementing podcasts that I've noticed a huge amount of results from. So um, live interviews, that's something I've done since day one. Um, but I think that definitely gets new eyeballs and new engages new people onto your show because you're hitting, like I said, the, uh, you're cutting the net really wide and it's not just one platform like YouTube, you're hitting people. I do 
um, when we do our collab events, I usually do an Instagram live. 